It's getting real here at the GSL Global Tournament Semifinals. Right now, Zest and Sue are in the midst of their rematch to decide which one of these two is going to another consecutive GSL Finals. Right now, the score is tied 1-1, and set three is going to be played on Overgrowth. Sue doing it again, picking Overgrowth. He's done it every single time against Every Barassas. single Zerg is doing it. It's a good choice. Yep. It just makes sense. And you know, Zest taking his map to be Frost, he did a great build on it. Uh, Protoss can definitely take advantage of all the uses of everything they have. Cannons going into Immortals, very strong pushes, the warp in at a very nice place where you can do the force fields. And Sue saying this time is my map, and I'm going to play it my way, and I want to take this victory. That's what he's got planned here. We'll see if Zest is ready for it. By the way, Zest's hair, you know, it goes to this focal point right in between his glasses. He always puts it that way. I was going to say more about it, but there's no time, Brennan. And you know what they say, there's no time like the present to go into game three between these two Titans. They're both GSL finalists. Only one of them was a champion with Sue. Sue wants to prove that he can be a third consecutive GSL finalist. The first to do so. His opponent to the top right in the teal he is KT Roaster Zest. Putting down a pylon down there again. Could go for cannons once again. We'll see. But down here in the bottom left, in the red, the Zerg player for SK Telecom. SK Telecom T1 Sue. There he is. His ID comes from the second part of his Korean name. That being Sue. Yes. Yeah. Pretty common for guys here. He's Yoon Sue, right? I believe. I think so, yeah. Uh, well, look at this little sign. Ooh, that's a cool drawing. GSL Global Championship. Otherwise known as the GSL Global Tournament. Yep. And another forge here for Zest. Yeah, he is doing what you said, man. You know, what isn't broken, uh, don't fix it. Something like that. I think it's that, right? Is it? Uh, I, I think I tried broken, this before. Don't fix it. Yeah, I, I, I tried that saying before and it didn't work, but this time I think I got a little bit closer. You got a little <laughs> bit closer. There's uh, in the in the south they say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I don't say that. Oh, he's from New York. I'm he's from, from New, York New York too. Yeah, you guys are from the same place. Thanks for coming down. It's a suit fan. Oh, look at this. He's just like. All cannons all the time. You didn't know I could cannon you like this, huh? You pick overgrowth against me. I was waiting for that <laughs> moment. Now I'm going to do another triple pile on wall. Zest is just like, he's not taking, you know, he's, he's just going for whatever he wants. He doesn't care. He's like, everybody thinks I'm going to be a cheeser or whatever. I don't care. I'll just cannon you a bunch of times in a row. Like. The thing is, like, if, if this keeps happening, it forces a reaction. Now, Sue takes the gold base as a result this time. But again, look, like if he has to cancel that natural, which it, it looks like it's looking like he might have to, that base at the gold is so far away from his main base. And it's so much closer to Zess than the natural is. There's the cancel. Um You know, I I think that let's see how this plays out. We've seen this once before in Code A. When uh, the the third base was taken at the gold, I'm trying to remember which player it was, uh, but it ended up just being too vulnerable, and there was just a four gate warp and attack at it later, and it was killed. Even though it gives you some extra minerals, it didn't get really its full value because it was at a weird timing, just like we see here. And I mean, he checks with that drone just to make sure there's no cannon going on. That's that's not going to be the case. Yeah, smart, I think. You know, he, he has to be careful against what Zest is doing here. If I were Zest, he, I mean, he's already canceled the natural. The base is so close to his own base. I'd, just, I'd go for another uh, aggressive attack here. I think that's what he's going to do. The question is, is he going to do it the same way? Because that ends up being a bit pretty cool. Oh, he's no way he's going to lose this Overlord, right? Right. Okay, he turns it around. He should be able to save it. It's going to be low health, though, and will be picked off early. Once the for oh my god, he's not going to oh save it. Oh my god. That is actually so huge, because that's going to supply block him as well. That is just also just this mental thing where you're like, oh my god, I just lost an Overlord to a cannon. You know, how does that, that, that's got to affect you on a mental, personal yeah. 
like level where you're, you're trying to get in the zone, you've got your adrenaline pumping, and suddenly you just lose an overlord to a cannon. And those two overlords that behind that were so late. They were only started once you realized that that one overlord was being taken down by the cannon. So Sue, you know, not in a great place right now. Zess going to throw down the Stargate once again. I think it's pretty smart, you know. Same same reason as last time. Get that uh, aggressive uh, flying units over there to the third base where it's not connected by creep. There's not going to be much over there to defend. And uh, later on it can be useful in the push. Well, that third base has been up for a little while now. And it will continue to get that gold base extra mining. Those of you who might be newer to StarCraft or... Uh, you know, you just never really played or, or took the gold bases. You were you were just never like uh, the type to venture out there and do something risky. You do mine seven minerals per trip instead of five on a gold base. So of course uh, that adds up quite quickly. Yeah. You think about it. It's like, wow, it's only two minerals more, but that's being multiplied over and over and over and over again on every trip you take. Yeah, and by multiple drones. Yes. Now, we're, we're seeing Zest put down the robotics once again. I think I, he's just going to do it, man. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just puts down the uh, the gateways as well. Because he has the one Phoenix out here. And, you know, even besides the harass, what it also does, it denies scouting for Sue. He, Zoo has no... I, he's going to have no idea that this is coming. He's just going to have to assume, if anything. Because yeah. there, there are no overlords near that base. And there's no way he can, he can get the scout. Those lings... If he tries to force his way up to the front, in front of a cannon, I think he might be able to see a box, so that's a maybe. This is so scary. He starts a Roach Warren on Hydrant. Okay, he knows. He's like, at this point, you know, pretty confident this is going to happen. He's going to actually lose more Overlords here, Brendan. I feel like this game has kind of started to be a train wreck for Sue, just with how much he's losing here. He's going to lose us. Even if there's a Transfuse, I think he might still lose it. No, no Transfuse. Yeah, well, with three Queens here, it should protect that very last one. But he's going to have to spend more and more minerals on those Overlords instead of units. Does queue up nine Hydralis this time. Okay, let's see how well this works out for him. Okay, well, he's actually going for a War Prism instead, so never mind. Not going to be the same push we thought it was. He's actually still making probes, too. So, he's just going to take a third base here. So, never mind everything we said before. He's really just going to be playing this a bit differently. Looks like he wants to try to go in here and assassinate this queen, maybe, with the zealots. He's got a big zealot attack being queued up. He's, like, trying to hide them, too. Well, he you doesn't know, know about the hydras. He made a bunch of pylons here, and he did actually stop at 44 here, and he does have six of these phoenixes, and he has this war prison with a very, very forward warp in here and a ton of zealots. He's just going to fight the Hydras with his Phoenixes here, now starting to lift them up one by one. Zealots are actually a bit isolated, though, away from the Hydras with the Zerglings, so they can't help out, but still, I mean, it turns out Phoenixes are pretty good against light units in the air. And this is so much damage output, I think it might still be enough to do critical damage here. He's killing all those Lings, which are not being made into drones. So, I mean, that's a, a further problem here. I don't think he's going to be able to win the game off of this, but... He just puts Sue into a bad spot again. Yeah, doing a lot of damage. Nice micro on the drones over there. He was a mineral, mineral drilling, and then he did get them out. Um, so did minimize his losses. But now Zest choosing not to go for that immortal push, but this time just doing that harass at the third base and going for plus two in blank. Probably going to add some more gateways. Yep, there are the two. Feels like how Zest has played these games, especially these most recent two, has been like he's got his book of builds like it's like a cookbook and he is just step by step like he's like and then you add the three gates yeah and just a teaspoon of plus two and a dash of blink yeah i mean to be honest this kind of play is very predictable and it's not you know the hardest thing to cast either i it, it seems like you know we're making the right calls here we'll hold that thought losing a couple of these phoenixes uh, back to what I was saying, you know, it seems like we're making the right call here, but it, basically it's just like, oh, well, now he's going to go for this, and then he's, he's going to go for that. Yeah, he's just, like, always playing this so tempo-oriented, so he's like, okay, well, now you made a bunch of units again, so your worker count is not right exactly, and I kill all your Hydras, so you got to start from scratch there. You know, and, and like cooking, again, when you start from scratch, it's much harder uh, than when you just go for the microwave. 
package. Uh, <laughs> yes, definitely. So, I mean, he's he's got the ingredients right here. And by the way, he fakes these Colossi. Yep. With a Ling only like that, you can't really tell that it didn't do damage to your Ling. So he might believe, okay, you've got Colossi, you might want to stop making Hydras. But he's actually not falling for it. He's making a lot of Hydras still, which is going to be exactly what he wants against this Blink Stalker plus two that is completely Colossus free. Yeah, he's making only Lings and Hydras. I think Sue has a better idea of what's going on. He's read Zest like a book. And now he's coming over here. He wants to go for the aggressive attack now. And this is a ton of Hydras with speed. Yeah, that drone realized he wasn't a Hydra. <laughs> he's going home. Shows another Colossus, but there's not two with this. And he has the Overseer, so he's, he's calling the bluff here. And I mean, this is a ton of Hydras. 28 Hydras against 11 Stalkers and 9 Sentries currently on the map. Of course, he's going to warp in a bunch more Stalkers. He may even just not commit to the attack now that he's seen this many Hydras. I mean, look at the observers seeing this. He's like, oh my god. Well, only, you know, just the, the only thing I could do to fight this is to make Colossi. I need to get those ASAP. Yeah. Well, the third on the way, or the plus three on the way. And uh, I, I feel like Sue actually could have done a lot of damage with the attack. Maybe he was just scared of getting force fielded off. And maybe he wasn't 100% sure if those were real. But um, he had a ton of Hydras, and he could have definitely punished Zest there. I, th I think if he if he's confident that these are fake, he's just going to attack here. Yeah, he also sent his whole army back to deal with the two Zealots in the War Prison as well. Yeah, he's he's definitely been a bit overcautious, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure if he realizes those are, are fake or not, but... I think he knows. He doesn't attack in this case because that's uh, attacking down into a half pipe. And not even Tony Hawk wants to go down that one right now, man, with yep. uh, all those stalkers on the other side. It's a bit dangerous. It's a ton of stalkers. It's a very big army, and Zess has nine warp gates right now. He has very good upgrades as well. The plus one for range for the Hydras right now are about to finish just now. And Zess is halfway to getting his plus three. So that's another thing to note, you know, very ahead is Zest getting that plus one with the Forge that came out very early. That's well, a nice little move with the contamination on the robotics. The thing is, he thinks that's a Colossus, but it's actually Storm that's coming down here. Yep. And he's like, alright, I'm going to delay your Colossus, maybe I can hit this timing. Sue is really so timid here and so scared. I, you know what, Wolf, I, I think he's been fooled. I think he has. I think he's like, oh, that's too many Colossi. I'm not sure about this, and he's making corruptors. Looking at this more and more, it's pretty obvious he's been fooled. I mean, just just down to the the timidness, the making of the corruptors, the 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 corruption on the robotics as well. He's like, oh, I'm not, I'm gonna stop your colossi from coming out, you know, like you said, and try to hit that timing. But the thing is, the temple archives too is cleverly made at the third base, so he couldn't really scout it with that overseer. Yeah. And now these stalks are moving across the map, and he's like, I'm gonna get corruptors. You know, he's just like, wait a minute, where are your Colossi? Corruptors are going to do absolutely nothing against this yeah, against this army. And he's got plus three, and Zest wants to push. 30 Hydras. Right 30 Hydras, nine Corruptors in the air to fight a Mothership core and a Warp Prison. Yeah, those six High Templar are going to have a lot of fun if they can get those Storms, that is. The Stalker's blocking them here a little bit. Those Storms not really hitting a whole lot, but it does zone out these, these uh, Hydras so you can move further up the ramp. Good splitting here by Sue, I have to say, and these storms have not done a massive amount of damage. And actually, I think he might just hold here. Yeah, he's got a ton of Hydras, but look at this. You know, more great Blink Ranko could do it here. The Archon's at the front, and he has plus three. I think he's got enough. Yeah, this the Archon's in the front, and the upgrades, and now that gold base is forfeit to take out a bunch of these Overlords. And now Roach is popping out, being picked off there as well. Gold base is going to go down. Zest taking his old gold base, his own gold, gold base here. Not his old one. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he's not going to try to end it here, I think. He's just going to push back. He's like, I took out your gold, and my gold is it hasn't been mined at all. And I'm just going to go for that right now. Well, uh, at this stage, he's got total control of this map. And his storm against pure Hydra with a few roaches is obviously quite good. He didn't hit the best storms, but they were... If you... There's storms are actually you know multifaceted in their use. If you storm and the storm doesn't hit anything because the hydras are moving back, 
And then guess what? The Hydras are moving back, which means they're not doing damage, while the Stalkers are doing damage and killing them and getting into a better position on the ramp. So, I mean, the Storm is a incredibly useful thing in this case, even if it doesn't kill all the Hydras in a very pretty way um, that somebody would want to make a highlight video of later. Yeah. Sue so, mixing in a bunch more Roaches. He knows the comp now is uh, based on the AoE damage, and the Roach is going to be able to tank a little bit better against that. Yeah, I mean, Roaches against Psystorm, they can almost like out heal it when they're underground but uh still this is a very very scary Protoss army that has now plus one armor plus two is on the way he's got these archons in the mix as well to help out add that extra damage let's see corruptors so awkward in the air right now yeah those corruptors like you probably just want to like cast corruption on the archons if you can well, he's going to now fight into a concave, and the High Temple are again not able to get up to get those storms off right away. He does get one that's pretty good. Second one here is much more important, and again, it zones that army back. Gets up to the top of that ramp, just being picked away at, and his economy is not good, whereas Zest is now on four bases, one of them being a gold. He's trying to retake a, a fourth, not taking the gold base, of course, because it's pretty vulnerable right now, and there's not a lot of minerals left. He's taking the base to the bottom right, which is also further away from Zest's army. But I I just I don't know how long he can really hold on. Yeah, uh, I I like this attack path uh, for Zest a lot better. I don't think he should be trying to attack up the ramps, especially against this composition. He needs this concave here. Here we go. Zoo is gonna go in here actually. Again, the storm's not too good. I mean, they're decent now, and with good blink micro, it seems like he's doing okay. But you know, more coming from behind the hydras and the roaches now. Oh, those two storms might just seal the deal. Oh, yeah. He's got so many warpins here. The upgrades are way better. And there's no way right now for him to remax. He has seven larva. There's 17 roaches uh, coming out, and then he's got seven larva left after that with a bank that no longer exists against even the mortal switches going on at home because he's like, all right, well, okay, you're starting to make roaches to tank my storms a little bit better. Sue is being patient here because he doesn't have to, to win the game now. Just gonna wait for a few more warpens with that crazy economy he has with that gold base. Yeah. For now, just waiting at that watchtower. Bunch of high templar warped in. Uh, just gonna wait and have those guys generate that energy for the storm. You know what, though? Looking at this game, Sue's economy is a very different place than it looks like it would normally look like, because he has the natural with like full minerals because it was late. You know, he got cannoned early on, so that base has more money than Zest Natural has. The main base of Zest is mined out, and he has that fourth base up to the right, which is also fully mining with a completely new base. So economy-wise here, he's not as mined out as Zest is. So if you look at the income with that fourth base up here, it's actually pretty even with these two. Yeah. All right, here we go. Storm goes down here. Roach is tanking. They have to get back, though. Mostly just Roach is in this army now. And uh, I love the Immortal Switch. He's got four now, has the Archons in the back. He made another Robo, and he has two Immortals at a time. I, I think that's really good for this composition for Zest. And he's going to have the uh, Colossus tech at the back, too, to add that extra damage in just a second. This time, it's going to be very real and very deadly, like those hallucinations earlier. This has been a nice game by Sue, all things considered. Starting things off with a funky gold base that he took early on because he was cannoned. Then he had to fight with Hydros against Psystorm. He's still holding on. His control in these fights, I feel, has been a little bit better than Zest. Finally, those storms go down again, zoning out those units. And uh, Hydros has taken so much damage here. He can't run away anymore. He has to fight. We'll see. I mean, he's going to do okay against this. But the Immortals, that switch that we talked about earlier, it's not enough. Yeah, more Archons popping out here as well. He never has. Oh, there's that uh, Kangnam style. And there's the Dancing Stalker. Somebody gave him my memo. GG. <laughs> He, was just, he just couldn't ever have enough to actually end the game every time he wanted these pushes. Well, this time he did it. it. Took him a while. And now Zest taking game number two, or win number two here for him. Going up 2-1 against Sue. He's got to feel pretty good about this one, especially on Sue's map pick. Sue looking angry again. You know what? I... Uh Really got a feel for Sue here. He has just been... He's either cheesing and it's its getting mixed results, or he's been cannoned, he's been double barracks proxied. 
He has had a tough two days here at the GGT and picks Merry-Go-Round as map four. Merry-Go-Round is a map that's bigger than it looks at first glance. The rush distance is pretty far. There's a lot of space on this map. There's not a lot of choke points. And things like Colossi and Storm are going to have a little bit tougher of a time against a more hydralis oriented composition. I don't think we're going to see Sue necessarily go for that type of composition. He went for it because of necessity, really, in the previous game, because that was the only way he could hold the timing attacks that Zest was pulling out of his cookbook, um, you know, one by one by one. Then eventually going into Blink Stalkers massively on three base with plus three, then adding those, those High Templar in, completely hiding the tech from Sue. Very, very smart play. And I'm impressed by Zest today. Sue, again though, better control, I would argue, in that last game. And hanging on when all things were stacked against him. So this series, even though it goes into Zest's favor slightly here, I think Sue could maybe turn it around. Yep, I think he has a good chance, especially on his map pick here. But what else does Zest have hidden up his sleeves right here? I feel like he's going to pull out another build that's probably going to be very aggressive. It seems like what he feels comfortable doing up against Sue. And uh, why change what's uh, not broken? That's what they say, man. It's time for the rematch. It's on. It's happening here at the GSL Global Tournament. Zest versus Sue again. Zest one win away of 